Stop me if this sounds familiar. You get a to-do list started at top of the month, the week, the day, and it's all laid out for you there. All you have to do is start doing those things. But then, by the end of the week, month, or day, you've barely gotten anything done if you've done anything at all. And now, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you have piled up around you that you'll eventually have to deal with, but now is not the time for that. Welcome back to Congruent Academy, the place for people in process where I, Cal, am getting my act together one video at a time. If you're like me and trying to figure out why you procrastinate, this is the video for you. I've recently seen videos pop up from creators like Degenerosity and Struthless on this very subject, uh, but before you say I'm riding their wave, you should know that I actually started working on this video about a month ago. It just took me this long to actually put it out. How very fitting really got to work on this. Well, with the help of Dr. Pamela D. Garcy's article for Psychology Today titled Nine Reasons Why You Procrastinate and Nine Ways to Stop, link in the description, I think we stand a chance to get some answers. Before getting into this video, I want to thank and welcome the new subscribers to this channel. This is the place for people in process where I'm getting my act together one video at a time. And in that process, I'm also working to co-create a culture of encouragement. And so it's great to see that this is something that resonates with people out there. Everyone is on their own journey, but I'm sure we can find we have a lot more in common than you think. Also, I want to just make it clear that procrastination is something that I'm unfortunately very familiar with. And it's something that I really want to work out and work on. I I'm learning about this right alongside you. So just take this for what it's worth. Now, let's get into it. What is procrastination? You probably already know, right? I mean, I should hope that watching this video isn't a way in which you yourself are actually procrastinating. If it is, stop watching now. Come back to this when you actually have time to be on YouTube. It's the scrolling on social media when you know that you've got work to be doing. It's the avoidance of doing something important either through inaction or doing something with less importance. The putting off of an activity. See that? I didn't even have to consult the dictionary to give you that definition. That's a definition acquired through lived experience, my friends. So what are some common reasons for procrastination? Do you struggle with self-compassion? Research indicates that people who demonstrate less self-compassion tend to feel more stressed, which increases the likelihood of procrastination. I know this feeling. This feeling of being overly self-critical, which leads me to withdraw. Perhaps it's a conditioned response of self-soothing. After all, it's more fun to play a video game than it is to work, isn't it? I find that when I procrastinate, there are lingering feelings, though, of fear and doubt. And recognizing this leads me to think that the procrastination only really exacerbates those emotions across time, as less and less gets done and more and more piles up. Did you have role models or people you looked up to that modeled procrastinatory behaviors? And if you didn't think that procrastinatory was a word, neither did I. But spellcheck taught me something new today. It's a widely accepted idiom that we are all both a product of nature and nurture. If there are or were people around you that you held in high regard who demonstrated a procrastinatory, said it again, approach to things, it stands to reason that one would naturally be more prone to act in such a way themselves. So ask yourself, are there role models out there that embody the values of taking action and who have reaped positive things from that approach to life? We cannot pick who we grew up around, but now more than ever, we have access to a world of people and ideas who can bring out the best of us, and we don't have to necessarily even know them on an individual level. Some people who come to mind to me are people like David Goggins, an absolute force of nature, who created this unbreakable spirit and resolve in some ways as a response to his previously dysfunctional conditioning. So keep hope alive. Do you feel you won't be effective at the task? Doubt is a dream killer. It is also a survival response, to give it possibly more credit than it's due. Perhaps doubt wants to protect us from humiliation or failure. In my experience, if I doubt myself, I can either choose to withdraw or expand as a response, but the choice is mine to make. And doubt can also be a useful thought if we respond accordingly. For example, let's say you're working with some program that's new to you. Without training or experience in it, you might feel totally lost and doubt your ability to work as effectively as you would in a program that you're comfortable with. 
you can ask for help. You can develop your skills. After all, how did you get comfortable with any program to begin with? You engaged with it, didn't you? So what if your response to doubt was a willingness to learn and grow rather than shut down as a result of recognizing our very human limitations? Are you biased about a particular task? Previous personal or observed points of reference shape so much of the world we see around us. When I've been not able to do something quite right in the past, sometimes it's because it doesn't even feel relevant to me. For example, let's say that I'm feeling lonely and you look around and everyone is on their phones, not engaging with the people around them. That might well lead you to think that feeling lonely is natural and engaging is not something that one should do. Just think about how you approach particular tasks and what you think about them before you do them. Is your sense of time about how long something will take just off? Perhaps you have a list of things to get done that looks something like this. And you ask yourself, am I going to get all of this done before my afternoon tea? By the way, do people still drink tea? I've heard someone talking about tea last week, but I don't think I've actually seen a tea bag since my Halo days. No, but seriously, having a reasonable sense of how much time it takes to do something is important if you're actually going to get it done, which is why it's really useful to use a schedule, and if at all possible, try to give yourself more time by starting on a task earlier than you think is necessary so that you can complete your task earlier or at least on time. With that done, don't forget to reward yourself for your achievement. Getting stuff done after being in a chronic state of procrastination is something to celebrate, even if you don't feel like it. Trust me. So how do you like to reward yourself for getting things done? I'm curious to know. Are you less focused on the future consequences than you are on the present gains? This is huge. It's so easy to just zone out. After all, there are so many reasons for why we wouldn't necessarily want to look ahead towards the future. After all, look at the world around us. Do we feel like things are headed in the right direction? Far easier it is to just check out. And by the way, I think it's important to note that I don't judge anyone watching this video for procrastinating and checking out. It's something that I struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. Even now, I'm struggling to complete these sentences because I know that there are so many other things that I need to be attending to. But I know that it's more important to just let go of the frustration I may feel about the way things are right now, so that I can actually use that energy instead to deal with the things that are at hand, instead of just pretending that they don't exist. Things are going to get tough from time to time, and those are opportunities to step up and not to withdraw. I've learned that lesson the hard way, and I'm resolved to have a better future. And if I'm to do that, I have a better chance of that happening if I'm present and attending to the needs that need attended to. It sounds very simple, but if it were, you probably wouldn't be watching this video and I wouldn't be making it, right? Is perfectionism getting in the way? Ah, yes. The risk of not doing something perfectly inhibiting you from trying to do something at all. Such a standard of perfection, it's actually impossible. There are no such things as a perfect person or a perfect world, we are all valuable and simultaneously all flawed in our own ways. The sooner we accept that, that we're going to make mistakes, the sooner we can get over ourselves and take care of business, learning all along the way. It's humbling and it's practical. So embrace the mistakes you'll make. They're learning opportunities if you choose to view them in that way. And before you know it, you'll know more and have gotten more done. Win-win, even if you do have to take an L from time to time. Are you currently experiencing depression or anxiety, which is getting in the way of taking action? Mental health is an important thing to address in our lives and in the broader culture. The upward trend of anxiety and depression, particularly in an era of social media, where we can observe an idyllic life of our peers when ours may feel in shambles in comparison, as one example, can make neglecting our own life that much more easy to do. But if you're watching this, and you do feel like you're struggling with depression or anxiety, I want you to know that you're not alone, and there are resources that are available to you. I'll leave some in the description. As a reminder, I am not a mental health professional, I am not a life coach, I'm not anything like that, but I don't have to be to know that so much of how we see the world is a product consciously and unconsciously of our lived experience, 
our environment, our biology. And there are so many people available out there that can help you understand the patterns of behavior that are so idiosyncratic to you in a way that I simply cannot do. So seek out the support if you need it. It's here for you. Are you disengaging from the task because of the discomfort it causes? Let's face it, the things we put off, we put off because they don't feel good in the moment. And yet, isn't it equally, if not more, uncomfortable to feel something that's been unaddressed just continue to grow out of the corner of your eye? Try challenging your belief about tolerating discomfort and revise what you say to encourage yourself to engage in a task, even if only for a little while. Focus on longer-term rewards that you'll experience while persevering with the task. Through that process, remember to reward yourself for doing things that are uncomfortable but necessary. Having reflected now on these potential reasons for why I might procrastinate and why you might procrastinate, I think there are a few things that stand out to me. The first is that procrastination creates more obstacles than it addresses, and awareness of that is important if we're going to change the habit. But learning to navigate around this obstacle so we actually get things done, that seems to me to be the secret sauce. So, with all that said, I'll acknowledge that I procrastinated in the process of making this video. I'll also acknowledge that this is a continual process of improvement. I can't reasonably expect myself to be a perfect, non-procrastinatory person overnight. Such quick fixes, to me, aren't possible. Rather, I'm pursuing the longer game of improving myself across time, getting my act together one video at a time. So with that said, that concludes this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe and share. And until next time, power to the people in process. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you should like and subscribe and check out some of my other videos. In a time of polarization and existential angst, Congruent Academy is the place for people in process. I'm getting my act together one video at a time, building on the value of anti-fragility to co-create a culture of encouragement online and IRL, with any luck working to restore a sense of hope and unity one video at a time. So until next time, power to the people in process.